um, there's this part, this, uh, there's this message I have been preaching, biblical pattern for living. If you remember, there's a part three I need to finish on the three enemies of every child of God. Do you remember? We talked about the world and its pattern. Because if I don't finish it, I didn't see, there's, no, there's no other time we can finish it for this year. We're supposed to be in a Bible study. But this coming Wednesday, Thanksgiving, Upper Wednesday, which is the last Wednesday of the year, we are praying the prayer of the end of the year. So let's take it so that by next year, we know we are true with this side. We'll go to another one. So I talked about the world and its, and its pattern. Last week, Sunday, we talked about our flesh and its desires as your second enemy. Now, in this service, we are looking at the devil himself as your enemy. Hallelujah. The third enemy of every child of God. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Are you there? It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, that's your enemy, the devil, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He walks around. He's going around. He's the one going out like a hunter, looking for somebody's life to destroy. That's the enemy we have. He's the devil. Now, and I've told you, I'll show you the, the way he operates. I've shown you that of the flesh. I've shown you that of the world. And now I'm showing you the direct attack of the devil. When the devil is after you as a child of God, how does he operate? Hallelujah. Talk to me, hallelujah. When the devil is after you as a child of God, how does he operate? I want you to understand how he operates so that you can know how to stay at alert and defeat him. I pray for you. I pray for myself. I pray for every member of our church that in the name of Jesus, we will not fall to the hands of the devil in Jesus' name. The Lord will watch over us. The devil will not rejoice over us. Now, in my experience as a pastor, beloved, I have seen so many people that fell in the hands of darkness. Now, let's look at the one for today. We are taking two in this service before we close. Now, number one, the devil came as a friend to Adam and Eve. So the devil can attack you by coming in as a friend. The devil can attack you by coming as a friend. He can put up the nature, the attitude of a friend in order to carry out his attack against you as a child of God. Now, and let's go to Genesis chapter 3. That's our study scripture this morning. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. The devil can come as a friend because he came as a friend against man in Genesis 3. Adam and, and Eve, you know, he came as a friend to Adam and Eve. To Adam and Eve. Now, and he, he put on the garment of a serpent. Look at it. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, that was their friend. Move on. Move on. We are stopping at verse 13. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, least you will die. And that was the same truth. Do you know the truth that they received from God? Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Holy who? You can't die. You can't die. You know, verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of, uh, eat, sorry, you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Look at how he came. He said, don't worry, you are not going to die. The day you eat of that fruit, God knows that if you eat of that fruit, you will be like God. You will be like the one you worship. You will know good from evil. Now, can you see how he came? He came as a friend and he came with a question. He, did God say you should not eat of the trees of the garden? So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate 
she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now look at the strap, look at the, how the thing operated. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Let's move on. They made themselves coverings. Now, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. And they, now let's move on, let's move on. We're talking about verse 13, verse 9. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Now, can you see that Adam now became a man that God could not see? An omnipotent God, the God that knows all things, could no longer see his friend, his, what he created, you know. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. I was afraid, I was naked, I hid myself. And he said, now look at God was saying something, who told you, which means you wouldn't have known this if somebody had not talked to you. Adam who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded that you should not eat? Next verse. Next, then the man said, the woman whom you gave to, me, to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. I ate. I ate. Then the man said, okay, let's move on. Verse 13, where I'm going to stop. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman now said, what did she say? The serpent deceived me. And I ate. The serpent deceived me. My friend deceived me. Now, I brought up the scripture to start with, to make you understand that as a child of God, you must be careful when it comes to relationship. Because one of the ways that the devil uses in order to bring down a vibrant child of God that is doing well is to place the wrong people around them. Now, let me show you another one. Second Corinthians chapter 11. 13 to 15. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to verse 15. Are you there? Yes. He says, for such are false apostles. Can you see that there are false apostles? They have the apostolic uh, 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 title, but they are not real deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of light. Now, to transform means they change themselves, their appearance. They, they are false in their mind, but they decide to look like they are genuine. Verse 14, it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself, in, in himself into a... And transformed himself as an angel of light. Verse 15, I'm waiting for you. Now, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. May you not fall to the error of wrong relationship in Jesus' name. Say amen to that. As children of God, our lesson here is, is to be careful who we allow to come close to us. The devil's first major target is to make us careless in choosing friends. Please follow this reading. Is to make us careless in choosing friends. You can't just relate closely with everyone. You are a child of God. Everybody cannot be your friend. And you know, the devil knows that you know where you are going. Right. So one of the things he intends to do is to bring somebody close. Now, you know what you have to do?
about David. When they spoke about David, you know what they said? God said, David is a man after my own heart. Now, why did he say David was a man after my heart? Because David in his comfort zone was thinking of how to build a temple for the Lord. There are principles that we, 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 we follow that makes us to be seen as beloved of God. And you know what the devil wants to do? He knows that if we don't go against those principles, there is no how we can lost out in the love of God. So he wants to bring serpentine kinds of people. Now look at how he got Eve. Look at how he used true Eve to get Adam. And see how, what, what Paul even said to the Corinthian church. He said the devil will always masculate himself as an angel of light. So if you don't want to fall as a child of God, please you must be careful of with your association. Be careful with your association. I wrote here, in choosing friends, the first thing you should do is to pay attention to the inner voice of the Holy Spirit. In choosing friends, the first thing you should do is to pay attention. Now, there's a spirit of God given to every child of God. The moment you become born again, you, you receive the Holy Ghost in you. Emma Now, in making friends, you must pay attention to the leading of that Holy Spirit in your heart. Do you know why? Look at Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. It shows us the end result of choosing wrong people as friends. And the end result of choosing good people as friends. Let's read together after the count of three. One, two, and let's go. He who walks, I'm the only one reading, let's go. He who walks with the wise men will what? Will be wise. Now, it shows us that whoever you choose to be your friend, whatsoever is in that person will rub on you. He now went further to say, but what? Let's read together again. Let's go. But the companion of fools will what? Will be destroyed. So if you choose a foolish person as your friend, within some time, you'll have the same result with that kind of a person. So first lesson this morning is that, please be careful when it comes to choosing friends. Let's look at number two. We are looking at the way the devil operates to bring people, believers down. Number two, in the case of David, the devil put in him a compelling Look at this. A compelling negative desire stroke slash vision. Write that down. I will explain. In the life of, sorry, in the case of David, the devil put in him a compelling negative desire slash vision. Now, what's a compelling negative desire or a vision? It's like something is tearing you up from within to do something. And this thing is wrong. Show, look at this. We saw it in 1 Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 1. 1 Chronicles 21 and verse 1. The Bible says, and the, and the devil, now, now Satan stood up against Israel and did what? And moved David to number Israel. The word moved David here means he steered David up. Now there was this strong desire that was coming in the heart of David. Count Israel, count Israel, count Israel, count Israel, count Israel. Let's read on. Show, show me the next one. Count Israel. Now and David's servant came and David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go! Number from Bathsheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. We are reading on. That I may know it. And Joab answered, Ah, the Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord, the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then doth my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? So don't count. God is against it. The people of the Lord must not be counted. So don't do it. Nevertheless, look at this. The king's word prevailed against Joab. Wherever Joab, wherefore, Joab departed 
and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Beloved, look up. Do you know that because of this single thing that David did, a thousands of Israelites were killed because of it? God was angry with David. Why should you count my people? I don't want you to count my people. So the question is, where did that desire came, uh, come from? Verse 1 have showed us that it's, it's the devil. So it shows us that the devil can give us a vision. It should leave one in, you know. The devil can put a desire for something in our heart. That that desire will now become so pressing. Ah, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have had the case of one brother like that before. They shared it with me. They said the brother was doing business. He was doing well in Lebanon. He's an evil guy. And all of a sudden, he just came home and told his wife, that house we're about building, that we are building in Lebanon, we are going to stop. The wife said, why? He said, I'm just led. I'm just led that we should go and build in my village. The wife went to the church and told their pastor. The pastor called the brother and tried to talk to him. The brother said, no. I just have this tearing up that I just need to go to my village to build. Beloved, he went to his village. He started building the house. He didn't get to Linted before he died. They eventually buried him without entering the house. It shows that it was a wrong vision. Something steered him up. I will teach you how to conquer it when you are being steered up in the wrong direction. There are people like that too. Something will just steer them up for their destruction. Oh, do you know what now? Do you know what now? What is next for you now is for you to go and take that chief, chief tenancy title in your father's house. And you are, you, it's like the thing will just be staring you up. Oh, it's, it's time. A minute, a minute, a minute. Listen. The Bible says, and the devil. Now, I wrote here, a compelling desire to do what is wrong. When the, this compelling desire crosses your heart, beloved, it is important that you know this. Only a mentor can help you at such a time. Who can help you? Only a mentor. That's why you don't only need a friend in the journey of destiny. Or any You don't only need colleagues. In the journey of destiny, if you must run the race successfully, you need mentors. Okay. By the time I explain, we get better words for it. Now, you need mentors. Now, there was, do you know that as David was speaking, Joab said, Ogamisa, Ogamisa, Untevesi, Yeuma, wrong. But the Bible says the voice of the king prevailed because he was a superior to him. One of the reasons why a lot of people are falling cheaply to the hands of the devil is because they do not have a mentor over their destiny. So I hear, I didn't hear you. The compelling desire at, that, at, at such times will be so strong to the point that the voice of friends the voice of Potogis may not be able to hold you from carrying it out. Now, and I ask a question here. Who is a mentor? How do you relate with a mentor? How should you find a mentor? And I answer the question, A, a mentor is anyone that plays the, a, the, the role of a, a, a coach, a father over your life. Anyone you can look up to as, this person is my father or my mother. That can play the role of a father and a mother. And when I say play the role of a father and a mother, you know, fathers and mothers don't only provide, bring provision, they also bring what? Instruction and what? And discipline. So a mentor is a coach. Now, when I was preparing for this message, I was trying my best to look for the name of this man. When I get there, I will tell you. You need mentors. If David had had somebody that he had respect for, do you know that David would have just, uh, Joab would have gone to tell that person. Daddy, kill him. That person would have just sent for him. David, see me in my house. Or see me at my office. Or let's say at so and so place. Why do you want to count Israel? A mentor is a coach. It is dangerous to live your life, hear me, without having anyone that can correct you. 
It is dangerous to live your life without having anyone that can direct you. Only who? An example is what you have seen in David. You can't succeed to reach your destination if you do not have a mentor. Your mentor is the one that corrects you. Someone who you have reference for. I didn't say respect. You have reference. And it's your really. See what come up with. Ah, any more That's a mentor. Not your friend. Not your colleague. Someone you, uh, you, you know you have little fear. Atum mukuro ni reference ne kon. Atum mulosi. Pe ah, ah, ah. Eni to o beru fun. Die. Pe ah, len yon loro mutu beru eni. That's a mentor. Now, do you know that it took the help of a mentor for, Dave, for, 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 sorry, for, for Moses to escape untimely death? Let's go to it. Exodus chapter 18, 5 to 9. And let's read it from the Amplified Version. Exodus chapter 18, from verse 5 to verse 9. I love the Amplified Version because there is this particular word that it explains in verse 7. Exodus 18 from verse 5. Listen, and Jethro... Moses' father-in-law came with Moses, Moses' son, and his wife to the wilderness where he was encamped at the mount of Horeb of Sinai. Please follow this reading. Don't forget that Jethro was a priest and Moses married his daughter. Verse 6. And he said in a, and he said in a message to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am come to you and your wife and your two sons with me. Look at verse 7. Verse 7. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. And did what? And bowed in homage. There was, there's nobody under the earth that Moses used to bow to except God. But here we see that eh, Moses had so much respect for Jethro. You know, wait for me here. You know, it was Jethro that saw how Moses was running government. He said, ah, ah, Moses, the way you are doing it, you will soon die. And if you care something, people will be dying in your assembly. Because for all these people to be waiting to see you, one after the other, before it will reach their turn, some of them will die. And before you finish answering all of them, they will die. Now, you know what you are going to do? Train leaders. Do you know that it was his counsel that helped Moses to live long? Now, but what I want to pick here, we are still going to speak more about it, is in that verse 7. A mentor is somebody that you will deliberately, you will deliberately decide that this person I will reference, this person I will show at least little fear. That I will allow this person to be able to caution me. If there is nobody that can caution you, you are gone. You are gone. Do you know why? Because there is the devil that operates by steering you up with the wrong desires, steering you up to pursue the wrong vision. At such times, it takes a mentor to look at you and say, ah, ah, no, 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 no. What are you trying to do? No, you don't need a car now. Ah. You are saying, I want to buy a car. You don't need a car now. And because you have reference for him. Not because you don't have the money for car. Am I flowing at all? Are you communicating with me? Listen. Anyone you call mentor that you do not have respect for cannot mentor you because your mentor is your coach. Anyone you have, you call a mentor, yeah, mentor menu, and your mentor cannot caution you. Ah, I'm sorry. That's not your mentor. That's your friend. Because your mentor is your coach. Your coach will be able to caution you. You know, there are times that the coach will say, now let's keep jogging, and your body is saying you are tired. The coach will say, double up, double up, double up, double up, double up, double up. At least, at least I, 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 I did manual for, and I did it, I did it with the whole of my passion for some time. In fact, we went for, we call it um, 
uh, 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 camp meeting. We went for uh, that time to Takwa Bay. Now, and our oddly officer, we call him OO. Once our commandant say, okay, we are going out for, for jogging. Jogging, well, is, our jogging is not we are jogging from Junction Liberty to Junction Liberty. No, we might jog from jo Liberty Junction to Mokola. And the, the oddly officer will be given a whip, like uh, Koboko. If he should meet you, he will whip you. So everybody will be jogging, will be singing. You know, as we are singing, Jogwe will be singing and be singing and be singing all the songs and we'll be jogging, we'll be singing, we'll be jogging, we'll be singing, we'll be jogging, we'll be singing, till we get to where we are going. You are tired, but you can't stop because your commandant is telling you, move on. Your oddly officer is holding the pankere uh, because of those watching online from far. What we call pankere in Nigeria is whip over there. He's holding the whip. You know the problem why things are not going right as it ought to go in our, in our lives, in so many people's lives, is that we don't have anybody to caution us. There is, we don't have anybody we have respect for that can tell us, I see, don't give back to the next child now. Nisu. We don't have anybody that will tell us, I see, see, you know what? Don't live your life like this. Everybody has become big man and big woman. So when there is this compelling vision from Satan, there is nobody that will tell you that, no, it's not yet time. Am I communicating? See, I hear. Quickly, let's move on. We are still looking at it. Who is a mentor? What is the assignment of a mentor? Number one, a mentor will be shown deep things about you. Even things that you may not know about yourself. A mentor will be shown deep things about you. Even things that you yourself eh, don't know about yourself. Do you know why? Because he's your mentor. God will open him up to see some things. How many of you remember that man? I, I, I tried to get his name when I was studying. I didn't get his name. That uh, boxer that uh, fought with Tyson Fury three times. That uh, The first one, it was draw. The second one, I think Tyson Fury won. I... I yeah, no, the, the, not the wild as well. The wilder, yes. Do you know that in their second uh, uh, bout, they call boxing bout, it was his coaching crew that stopped the match, the bout. They waved the towel as uh, Tyson Fury was punching. They waved the towel that let the referee stop. You know what Wilder did? He came out, he said, why should my coaching crew give up on me? Why should they give up on me? Why should they? Ah, no, 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 no. They shouldn't have stopped. I could continue the, the fight. After that fight, he sacked his coaching crew. He employed new coaching crew and requested that he will challenge Tyson fully the third time. Did you watch that bout? The third, I watched the third time bout. Tyson fully beat him to the point that blood was coming out of his ears. He was just, you punch him, you fall down. The next time you punch him again, he will fall down. Now, the reason is because he thought that that coach didn't know me very well. He now employed the one he wanted. That one allowed him to be well tortured. <laughs> you know, Tyson Fool did not debut pay. The referee himself had to say, let's stop because this man couldn't stand up again. Am I communicating? But the former coach that stopped the bout, stopped the bout because he knew the man. That the way Tyson, uh, Wider is fighting, I don't think he'll be able to continue. Referee, stop. Declare Tyson Fury the winner. God will reveal some deep things to you about, um, um, to, I mean to your coach, about you, to your mentor, about you. See, I hear. That's why I said, it was Jethro that saw the mistake of Moses. Even Moses didn't see it. He didn't see it. Moses didn't know that the way he was doing ministry, he won't last. Can I tell you, church? You know, most of you are workers in our church. That's why I always take first service message a little bit higher. Please, allow yourself to be mentored. 
tap your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I didn't hear you. Please allow yourself to be mentored. Because there are several things about yourself you don't know. It takes a mentor to look and say, ah, ah, your boy is in the way The way this guy is going, he won't last though. We used to have a brother like that in our church. It was from here God blessed him. I could still remember the day we were having the meeting. I told everybody, bring the name of anyone that can help you. He brought the name of somebody. And we started praying. And after the service, he went back to his business. The second day, the person came to him and said, do you know I'm the major supplier of social and so products? I'm their marketer. I want to help you. Go and look for a place. He said, I don't have a shop. He said, go and look for a place. I will supply you. Those years with goods worth three million. Eh? For a man that doesn't have a shop, he quickly looked for a place. They supplied him. He started. Beloved, as long as he was taking instructions, this brother was prospering. But he got to a point in his life, I saw that he was no longer com comfortable in coming to fellowship. And it started when he bought a car. He will pack his friends, they will go. By the time he comes, he's drunk. The wife will come, hey, Papa, hey, the way my husband is living like, I will try to call him. He says, sir, sir, you don't understand. You don't understand. You know, and when mentee begins to tell mentor, you don't understand. <laughs> sir, you don't understand. You don't understand. Uh, uh, business, business, business. Ah, brother, hey, take care easy. And, sir, you don't understand. You don't understand. Business, business. Ah, bro, sir, hey, take care easy. Now, to now wrap it, he now came. He says, sir, now I want to get married. I said, brother, he says, sir, me and you know that it is borrowed money you are using to do business. The goods are not yours. Banks has given you loan to do business. You cannot do society wedding. He says, sir, you don't understand. When I do business, I know a lot of people. They will come. They will give me gifts. They will give me cash. I say, see, as at that time, wait, it was so in Nigeria. As at that time, I told him, I said, people go to occasions now calculatively. When you put food in front of them, they look at the meat. This meat is about 200. If I combine this rice together, go try. Tobacco rice in 200, go try. Go for any malt. Let's say 200, that's 600. We are for 1,000, send me food. I tried talking to him. This guy didn't listen. He went and pumped money into a very big society wedding. People came and ate. By the time he was counterbalanced, you know, he was trying to balance what he received as gift. He discovered the business money was gone. So he could no longer bounce back to business. From after that wedding, few years after, his business collapsed. You know where he went back to? He went back to a man without a shop and started to look for customers that he would take for, to other people's shop and pretend that it is his shop. Why? He didn't listen to counsel. Now, don't forget, your mentor is your coach. God will begin to show him so many things about you that you do not know about yourself. I wrote here, Jethro was an instrument in the hands of God for the perfection of Moses. Write this down. Your mentor is an instrument in the hands of God for your perfection. Your mentor is an instrument in the hands of God for your perfection. So you can't fight your mentor. He's an instrument in the hands of God for your perfection. So you can't fight your mentor. I come again. You can't fight your mentor. It's an instrument in the hands of God for your perfect. Holy badger. So that you not be like a wider that sacked his coach, employed a new one that didn't know him. I love wrestling. I love boxing. I love all those hard sports. I was watching um, my good one of my very good heroes. I love him. Watching him. Uh, this um, um, 
Oh God, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Why should I forget his name? Uh, the Nigerian that is in the kickboxing, uh, Adesanya. At the day he lo- lost the match, I watched the interview. He lost to a man that has defeated him at every level. He has been a champion for several years. You know what Israel said? He said, he won, I agree. But I will go sit down with my coaches, my team. I'll watch the match again to find out where I went wrong and what we need to amend. Then I'll come back for a rematch. He said, I will go sit down with my coach. He didn't say, I can't sit down alone. You need to learn to sit down with your coach. How many children of God today have count, come, go for counseling anymore? You, you feel you, I know what to do. See right here. Number two. Your mentor. When you want to make important choices... Listen, you should seek counsel from your mentors so as to be double sure you are making the right choice. When you want to make important choices, see, in this your life, there's what we call important choices. Ah, our choice comes out to be very important. Very important. That in making such choices, listen, you will need to book time for counsel to be double sure when my wife wanted to put to bed you know of her third child Uriola, she was heavily pregnant of Uriola. I went to see my mentor he was busy so I saw my mentor's wife mommy Adelaku. and I said mommy uh, that time my mom was still alive my mom said she would prefer my wife to come over to Johannesburg South Africa to give birth to the child so they are making our documents ready. What do you say, ma? And my mother in the Lord is a frank woman. The same way my wife is a frank woman. In fact, we were still talking about my mother in the Lord this morning. We always talk about her in our house. Mommy's principle is this. If you don't sow into my life, if you have problem, don't expect to get anything from me. That's our principle. So this morning we were still laughing, mommy, ah, she knows all the people giving us it. And if you have problems, she will say, yes. The Bible says, give, it shall be given back to you. Good mayor. Press down. Shaking together. And running. So it is not the way you gave me, I will give you back. She met my daughter in school. I said, ah, are you not in your life? She said, yes. Ah, are you in Licity? She said, yes. Me too, I'm in Licity. You are my colleague. Come, let me give you money for snacks. And she gave her 20,000. And you learn, I know. Mommy, the mommy, daddy, daddy, I met mommy. Adelaku. She gave, why did, you, I told, why did you collect it? Ah, okay. Don't worry, I know what to do. So I, 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 I sat with her. She now said to me, Pastor, I said, sir. Pastor, I said, sir. He said, if your wife don't give back to the child, under your nose. Hmm. Anything can happen. Sending out to South Africa is not under your nose. Especially if you are not going to go with her. Your mommy cannot play your role. Let her deliver under your watch. I didn't have to say, let me now go and begin to pray. Oluwa, 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 Oluwa. Lord, what do you say? Lord, what do you say? When he has given me a mentor, Instantly, when my mom called, Pastor Alpha, she and Mrs. Shimbo, we know that it's an elective operation that she will use, she will pass through to deliver this baby. Let it be done under my watch. The same thing, the, my family members kept calling, Pastor, hey, Nigeria is bad, Nigeria is this. Send your children to us abroad. They may be listening to me now. I went back to my mentor. That, uh, Papa, what do we do? He said, Pastor Prince, we, sir, I said, sir, allow them to catch the morals 
One, that we have in Nigeria. Two, to know your God very well before you now transport them to a strange land. I have somebody that cancels me. Some of you are making mistakes. We are watching you make mistakes. Avoidable mistakes. Do you know why? You don't seek counsel. You don't seek counsel. You feel I know. Continue your stupidity. May God deliver you. Listen. You seek counsel from your mentor so as to be double sure you are not making, sorry, you are making the right choice. I wrote a book for counseling. It is not your mentors that should be looking for you. It's not your mentors that will be looking for you. Say, ah, ah, Marie, Emma Kujo Meta, Kiloa Day. Just like I was counseling some people yesterday. That you are not saying, ah, mentor, me be missing you. Eh, Rimi, eh, Berimi. Mentor, call you, Mama, Biri, Mentor Koluma Birier. No. It is you that needs your mentor. It is you that should look for ways to see your mentor. Do you know why? He has an assignment in your life. And the devil does not want that assignment to be done. The devil is not after you. The man, your mentor is after you. I summarize this point by saying, stop hiding. Let's take number three. I'll stop at number four because of time. Number three. When your mentor decides to be hard, look up. When your mentor decides to be hard, it is important you know that he has, he has discovered that, sorry, he has discovered some things that needs real correction. When your mentor decides to be, your mentor can decide to be hard. When your mentor is hard, discover that, see, ah, this mentor has seen something, oh, there's something about it's just like if you go to the blacksmith shop, you will see that they will heat the melter, the iron. One heat, somebody will eat it. Shape come fe fimu on a base. If you ba ba, they will begin to eat it. Ba. If they want to bring round shape, they will be heating and using the the application of force to force it into being round. That's what so many members don't like. When their pastor is hard, they feel. That's why there are too many eh, eh, unprepared children of God in several churches. That's why the, beast, the blessing is still waiting. The blessing doesn't fall upon those that are not prepared. The blessing will rest upon you when you are prepared. But how many of you can take hard training? You know you are workers. I didn't even expect that members would be in this service. You are workers. So when your mentor decides to be hard, don't see him as wicked. If I let me even ask you. Your mentor cannot envy you now. What do you have that your mentor wants to envy? Say, my mentor is envying me. My mentor is... Uh, your mentor cannot envy you. So if it's hard, it's for a purpose. Now if I'm you, when the mentor is hard, stay put. So that those things that need to be worked upon can be worked upon. As some of them, especially Brother Gabriel, whenever I lead praise, I was, at times I also take the microphone from him. I know you'll be feeling, ah, why is, he, why is uh, my pastor doing like this to me? Does he not like it when I lead praise? I always tell him, you always like to perform miracle when you are leading praise. You didn't do any riasa. You want to sing and expect them to meet up with the, and the instrumentalist to play according to your mind. That, it doesn't happen. All those ones you see intros and outros when musicians are singing, they had been proper yazas. That's why there won't be a mistake. I said, but you just come. You come with a you could come with special number as praise worship. You'll not be expecting people to flow. Everybody will not be looking at you. Hello. Are you sure you are here? Shall I hear? Shout it aloud. It's like you are getting angry. Oh. Listen, so he will decide to take extra sessions 
when he discovered that ah, something is wrong, he will decide to take extra session with you. At such times, you may feel like running away. Please don't run. Because if you do, you will avoid being made. You will avoid being made. Olele, but don't avoid being made. Abi Sashim, after you run to Kilimanjaro and run around, you will still come back again. When we apply for us, you will run, 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 you will still come back again. I think really Shashka, then saying, Ah, we have been seeing him. But it's still one thing will be conducive to fight. You must be made. The same thing our instrument, our drummer. Yes, I'm still working on you. I won't give up because I want to teach you something that will help you for life. You're, you have great destiny, but you don't know how to sit down to hear the word. So that's why I'll keep walking. I'll keep talking. I'll keep applying force so that when you sit, you will hear the word. That will make those you have great potential, so very great. But you have too many friends, you don't have mentor. And I understand you. That's why I'm praying for you. So your mentor at times will be very hard. At times I used to think that one or two will run away. Yes. When we apply force. But you see, see, she will still return. Don't run when the, the pot is hot. It is because God wants you to boil and for the beauty of your life to manifest. Let's take the last one. I love this one. I'll close with it. Close your eyes to every negative thing people tell you about your mentor or else you will gradually begin to lose value for them. And you know, when you lose value for your trainer, you no longer obey him freely. Abby? And when you don't obey freely, you cannot be made. Cristiano Ronaldo will have been one of the best players. Better than Messi. But he will always try to prove to the coach of his country and his club at times that you can't teach me how to play. That's why they want to bench him. Look up. Is your mentor perfect? No. But you are not sent to look at the fault of your mentor. Focus on the training. Was Jethro a Jew? No. But Jethro was used by God to prepare Moses to last in ministry. When people begin to come around, ah, Ah, they tell you, ah, the man that passed on, you know, the pastor in Baton preached by or where have you preached? Ah, oh, dear, do you come for where preach? Am I just so full? Am I just, oh, my, you preach? Oh, do you come for where preach? One for what's here, qua, one, and or colloquy, you know, to the poor relevance. I've read scripture several times. I will see that Paul will write, it is reported, it is reported among you. That so so and so thing is going on. Somebody told him. He wrote it to the church. But it doesn't mention the name. It is reported among you that so so and so. Several times. It is reported among you that so so and so. I know one of the one of the things that stop a lot of people from being made is that they always open their ears when they hear people come around to begin to spread some reports about their mentors and listen. If it ever gets to a point where you devalue your mentor, begin to look for another mentor. He can no longer train you. Begin to look for another mentor. He can no longer train you. The barrier we had of our, our free cent. When the, uh, that, our mommy died, my mentor sent for me. Come and see me. Where? At the city of it. Yes, sir. 
My car, that time, eh, the, I was still struggling with the tires. And I, I didn't want to travel until I got, get a new one. But he sent for, I had to travel straight. And when I got there, he started talking to me. So you see what? This is how to do it. This is how to do it. This is how to go by it. This is how to go by it. Then this, I don't want you to hear. I don't want you to ever go to the pulpit to say that somebody died. You don't use the pulpit to announce the death of people. It's a pulpit, not a push pit. You don't push people to, to the pit from the pulpit. You pull them out of the pit. That's why you never had me come here to say, Praise the Lord. I just want to tell you that one of us has gone to be with the Lord. This is not the place for it. He says, so I'll be sending so so and so person to, to join you in that program. Yes, sir. Now, by the time we finished the barrier, I didn't remember that I needed to go back to give report. I sincerely speak, I didn't remember. It was when one of the daughters of the late mommy came and was saying, ah, ah Papa even asked of you today. Something said, have you given report? I told my wife, you know what? You will be going home. I will worship there today at the evening service. And I went to worship. After the service, I followed him inside. And I said, sir, I came to give you report of the barrier. How did he go? I said, fine, sir. How many of the children attended? I told they, I heard that the boy didn't come for the barrier. I said, yes, sir. He's an Islamic fanatic, sir. He said, that's, I see. I see. Now, the last one, how are we going to help her to go to school? I said, sir, this is what I had. He said, I see. I see. I see. That's it. The one in your church that is the daughter, is she a devoted worker? I say, yes, sir. What about the husband? I say, yes, sir. He's, an, he's the head of the ushering department, sir. I see. I see. The one in Lagos, well, I said, I don't know much about her, sir. I see. I see. <laughs> ah, there is nothing like a one man army in the journey of destiny if you want to last. There must somebody that can call you to order. And after everything, he said, well, that's a good one. I've, I've had the report from you now. Uh, don't worry. When I need to talk to you about the family again, I will see you. And he prayed for me. And I left. Don't open your ears and, hear, and sit down. And somebody is now talking about the person that God used to pull you out of pit, speaking against the person, and you are listening, you are laughing, it will be killing your value for that person gradually. Are you blessed this morning? You know, me too, I'll be saying, I see now. I see. Yes. Anything, okay, I see. I see. So when you talk now, if you hear me say, I see, I see, that's where I got it from. Realize up on your feet. David, if you want to clap, clap. Are you in this school? <laughs> Wait, let's close with this. You know, can you imagine if David had had a mentor and Joab had gone to tell him? Do you know that because I have a mentor, I'm careful. I don't just do things anyhow. I'm very, very careful. Because there are some things if I want to do, if my wife should go and report, I know that I have somebody that can say, call Pastor Prince for me, and I will not say no. So anything I want to do, I consider them first. What would my mentor say? Will he be pleased if I do this? May God give you wisdom. May he help you to follow 
this instruction in Jesus' name. I didn't hear your amen. May you not fall into the hands of the devil in the name of Jesus. Every plan of darkness against you, I cancel it. As you go into this new week, go into the blessing of God. Go into the favor of God. I declare your heavens open for blessing. Your heavens open for goodness. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. Can we share the grace together in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. A confession. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. 